Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. The JF17 Thunder has just come out and we're going to show you a quick video here of how to set up your controls because as it turns out, it's actually very difficult. So, from the main menu to options, controls, select the JF17. As ever, I'm going to assume that this is your first aeroplane and you don't know what this means. Here is the action of the JF-17. There are hundreds of them, but we only need, only need a handful to be bound to our HOTAS, our joystick. Here is the category that that action belongs to. Here is the keyboard command that we've currently got set, and a lot of them are set up as default. Here is the left HOTAS, so if you like the thrust stick side. Here is the right HOTAS, so the control stick side. If you have rudder pedals, there will be the next one there. I don't have them. My feet don't work very well. And if we want to narrow down what we see here, we've got this lovely box here. The first thing we want to do is our axis commands. Always do axis commands first. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. Now, I've already got this set up, and I'm just going to, if you like, tape over them. At this point, what I'm going to do is show up on the screen the HOTAS in the actual J17 Thunder there. And on the right here, I'm going to show my particular stick, the X56. So this is relevant purely to my X56 stick. You probably won't have that, but you will probably have the same problem as me, is that you probably won't have enough buttons, switches, hats on your uh, HOTAS to facilitate the JF-17. I'm going to show you how to get it around it on the X56. And from that, you can extrapolate how you can get around it on your X52, your Warthog, whatever you've got. So first for axis, easy ones first. Pitch and roll. So double click here. So we're in this side here, which is the control stick side. Pitch, move the stick forward, move it back. OK, accept that. And then we're going to put some axis tune. So I'm just going to put a little curve on there. Putting a curve on gives you extra movement around the small movements of the stick like that. Less movement on the high movement. You may change it depending on how the aircraft flies, but I'm just going to show I'm going to have a 10 on this for the time being. Next is roll. Roll, it's left and right stick, obviously. Going to double click there. Left, right. Okay. I could test it like that, make sure it's picked it up. And axis tune. And in this case, I'm going to give it a little more 15 curve. Again, I may change that later there. Next is rudder. You would probably have your rudder pedals. You would have a, another column here. I don't. I, what I do have is a twist to my stick. So I'm going to double click that, twist it left, twist it right. Okay. I'll test it. And axis tune. One thing you'll notice is that red dot is outside of that red black square. That means we need to add a bit of dead zone in that. It's because it's old, it's used, and it doesn't send it properly anymore. So now it's issuing no left or right rudder when the stick is actually in its physical neutral position. You definitely will want plenty of curve on your rudder. Everyone always does, so I'm going to say 25 curve. Okay. Next is something you do need. Now this may change as the J17 proceeds and develops but at the moment you must have your antenna elevation on an axis i am going to bind it to a knob i've got it called a knob 2 on my x56 diagram that you can probably see so i'm going to turn that knob 2 left turn it right it's called it joy slider 2 uh, but just for my notes i've called it knob 2 because i didn't know what else it was actually called there is a td slew you can put here but i'm going to do the tdc a different way so i'm not going to put td axis slews next thrust it's just a single engine, so double click here, push your thrust stick forward, push it back. OK, check it. That's that done. And zoom view, very important that everyone has this and you have it set up as an axis. I'm going to double click it here. I have a, uh, a knob at the top and you can again cross reference the uh, name here to my uh, description so you can see exactly where it is. Turn it left, turn it right, test it. And that's so I can zoom in. It simulates focusing the pilot's eyes uh, so you can see things clear. That's the axis. Unfortunately, that's the easy bit done. Now we need to do the hard bit. We're going to go to HOTAS. Pretty much everything on this HOTAS here needs to be bound onto our physical HOTAS, our X56 or whatever we've got. And that's going to be very, very difficult. So if we concentrate on our actual JF-17 HOTAS at the top there, it shows you all of the different commands. It shows you all of the different switches and knobs on the actual JF-17 HOTAS. And it also shows in bold letters, bold numbers next to them, I've added how many positions, how many elements of that switch you need. For instance, if it's four then you need four elements of that switch, like a four-way hat that could go left, right, up and down. If it's five, you need five elements of that switch, like a depressible switch that could go up, down, left, right, and be depressed. If it's one, then it's just a switch that can just be set in one position or just, you know, just a binary push switch. And it will complicate a little more, but let's just go through that. First, we'll do the stick, then we'll do the thrust lever. For the S1, which is a five-way or a five element switch i'm going to put s1 as you can see there as joy button 13 11 14 12 it is the as you can see on my description the four-way hat switch on the top right of the control stick 
Unfortunately, that is not depressible, so I don't have a depress function. So what I'm going to do is put what you call a modifier on. A modifier means that you can reuse uh, these here, but with an extra button being pressed, like the control button on the keyboard or something like that, and that can act as the extra, uh, the extra element. Okay. So for instance, um, I'm going to show you how I could do it here. I could go depress uh, press here. I could go here, and I could press the control button. I'm pressing the control button now. And I'm going to do just the up element. And you can see what I'm doing now is adding for the press here a added modifier of left control and the joist button 7 on the right control stick. Okay, so that's how I'm getting around that. Next is S2. It's another five element switch. So I'm going to use the hat switch, as you can see, with these guys here, the D, U, L, and R on my cross reference. Um, on the stick, uh, that is going to be the left four-way switch. Again, it does not have a depress ability. It's just a problem with the uh, X56. If you've got a Warhawk, I think this will be a, a lot better. And I've done the same thing. I've done, you can see the plus there, I've done a modifier. So I've done a modifier there to one of these guys here to be the depress function. I can't find any other way around that at the moment. If you've got a better idea, then, then let me know, obviously. As you know, with really complex planes like this, the big challenge is getting all of these commands onto your HOTAS, which is invariably going to be simpler than a real JF-17 HOTAS. Next is weapon launch, which is going to be just one. So as you can see there, I've got that as that one there, button three, which is what I call trigger two in the second trigger. Fire main gun, S4 needs just one, and it's just going to be my main trigger, just a single uh, trigger, obviously. Next, S5 is going to be a single element switch, and the key to what it should be here is NWS. That means nosewheel steering. If you play DCS with other planes, then you'll know nosewheel steering is something you should set up with all of your aircraft in the same position on your hotel each time. And I've got that here, and I've got it as Joy Button 5, where I always have my nosewheel steering. It has other functions, as you can see, but that's uh, not to talk about today. Next is trim. Whatever plane it is, you're always going to need your trim, even an F-16. So we're going to have the, as you can see, uh, button 9, 10, 8, and 7. That's going to be the top right four-way, four-element hat switch um, on, the, on the right control stick. And I apologize. I, made a mis I just realized I made a mistake here. This S1 is not the top right hat switch. I think I said it was the top right hat switch. It's the bottom right hat switch. Where do we get to? We've done trim. For uh, autopilot off is I haven't got that one yet at this point I've completely run out of buttons on my HOTAS and I don't think autopilot off is going to be that important for HOTAS fingers crossed so I've actually just set it as the A key on the keyboard that's the best I can do at the moment and I could do a modifier I suppose but I've already got so many modifiers here I just I think it's a bit getting a bit silly change weapons next and and we're going to use that there you can see it's that little uh, stalk that sticks out on the left there it has a pressable function and that is button four so that is all of the stick down now we're going to go to the t functions um so we've got t1 now t1 depending on how you want to do this can have why two elements or three elements so you see t1 one two three elements or you can replace it with these two up here master mode switch next mode and previous so if you've got three a three element switch on your thrust lever available set it up as that i don't i just don't have that on the x56 so i've gone for the master modes next and previous and i've got it uh, just excuse me while i try and find it is that one there as you see joy 24 26 you can cross reference that with my x56 next up we have t2 uh, it, it is a three way or three element uh, switch and you need all three elements uh, it would be lovely if you had a switch that has three elements but i don't so i've had to kind of separate it up so for countermeasures i'm going to have it's kind of on the back of the thrust lever if you cross reference you can see that there uh, the up position is going to be countermeasure that there is going to be the uh, jammer i consider you know both are kind of countermeasure type items so i keep them together this one here I've used as a uh, button two, and that is what I use for my cage uncage on most aircraft. And this we believe has cage uncage functionality with the uh, what do you call it, the sidewinder type variant. And so I've put it there. So it's the pressable kind of turning knob on the top. If you cross reference that. Speed brake is next, and I'm going to use the one I always use for speed brake. If you look at the cross reference, we have actually a four way switch there. The reason I don't use these as four way switches is that they're almost impossible to use as four way switches. They're very if you've got an X56, they're, they're very inaccurate to switches. So I just use it up, 
and the down ability for speed break. And again, I use that for all of my aircraft universally. So that can be, uh, and I should say, that can be either a two-way or a one-way switch. You could have up and down, uh, sorry, off and on, as I like to have, or you can have toggle. So you could just make it a one-way switch, if you like, for speed break toggle. That would toggle it on, toggle it off, toggle it on, toggle it off. So that's up to you guys how you want to do that. Next, and we're nearly there, T4 is a three-way switch, but you only need to use one. Um, interrogation, IFF, start, stop, you'll need. And I put that there which is the pushable oh, it's kind of hard to explain there's another turny knob underneath the thrust lever and he's pushing that that is that these two you don't actually need uh, you're just not the way dcs works you don't need to use these two like you do in a real aircraft because you'd use them for text chat i would just keep them on your keyboard and i bound them to the standard dcs keyboard things as you can see there if you're using an uh, an external program like srs to mimic real radios then you would go and set um, other buttons on your keyboard up but that again that's not for this video so I'm going to clear that off uh, there so you only need one here. TDC everyone who knows about DCS and planes every, all modern aircraft have TDCs you'll need it it's a five unfortunately it's a five way uh, switch I've got nothing left at all on my left lever it's all taken up my right lever is all taken up pretty much or the, the usable parts of it so unfortunately I've had to go to cursor keys on the keyboard at this point so I've got down left just as cursor keys here target lock I've got enter button on the keyboard you know return uh, as well as that I do have one spare on the right hotas the control stick that I do always use in all aircraft as target lock and I put that there I call it trigger three but it's target lock there and that's everything you need to know on your hotas which is pretty much everything you need to know a couple of caveats I need to add we to search here flaps I've of course, I've run out of buttons. I've basically left it as just uh, the F key or Control F or Shift F. Uh, but I've also got here a couple of iron switches on the bottom of the base. I'm not sure if they're labelled because I can't see the, the the picture at the moment. But if they are, I'm putting them there as a backup. Gear, you can't bind them to the codes at the moment, so you just it's just G or left uh, Shift left right G there as you like. All we're left here with is auto start, which is always always useful. Start. Uh, so. I'm, I can't bind them to the uh, joystick, which is annoying. Hopefully, they'll add that functionality. So I'm just having to leave that as the usual left windows and home and stop as uh, the left windows and end. And that's it. Um, that is how to set up the JF-17 as it is in the real aircraft, um, as close as I can on an X-56. Yes, if you've got more functionality in your joystick, go and add more. But that's the basic functionality that you'll need to use it like a real JF-17 pilot. <laughs> Hope that's useful. See you later.